Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and welcome to the Flight Sim Studio Boeing 727 engine start tutorial. First of all, congratulations. With the previous two tutorials completed, you have completed the most difficult part of the entire setup of the Boeing 727. From here on, flying it is as easy as riding a bicycle. So let's go right into it. We're going to start by ensuring that all the doors are closed, which we can check on the flight engineers panel just down here. And in case any of the doors was still illuminated or still opened, you could close them through the aircraft page over here. Also make sure that once the APU generator is online, all the ground equipment down here is removed and all the doors and hatches are closed. So that good stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and get our aircraft onto the line. We're going to start with our transponder, which we're going to set towards the on position when we request our pushback clearance. When clearance is received, the beacon light is turned on, and then we can already move to the flight engineers panel. Back here on the flight engineers panel, we have a couple of things to cover. So first of all, we are going to start up here on the air conditioning panel and we are going to turn both pack switches off and ensure that all the bleeder switches down here are turned on. Now, next up, we can move forward and ensure that our wing anti-ice is switched off as that would draw too much bleed air from the system and engine start may no longer be possible. So, with all of that out of the way, we are ready to go. At this point, we could read the before start checklist, which you can find on the clipboard over here. However, there is one small problem. The before start checklist we have over here is actually written for the layout of a different airline, and there is a lot of systems mentioned over here that our airplane does actually not have. For example, going over this, we can see, for example, that the SCAT system is in use down here. That's not fitted to our version of the aircraft. I do hope that they will update this after the writing of this video. So hopefully in a future version, things like the SCAT or like the ACARS are not going to be on here anymore. So if you do this checklist and you're wondering at some point like, I've never had to do this, then yeah, most likely you didn't because this checklist does not match this aircraft exactly. I'm not going to go over each and every single one of those checklist steps. If you're interested in those, I can very much recommend you to have a look into the online documentation from Flight Sim Studio. So if you go into the documentation hub and then checklists down here, you have detailed explanations as to what all of the single items of the checklist actually mean. So. Like that, you can go over the checklist if you want to. However, I'm going to leave this out because too many of those things just simply do not match the airplane that we are actually flying right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the checklist away again and assume that the checklist is completed and our pushback clearance has been given. So we're going to continue our GSX pushback and we're going to face with the nose to the left. Clearance is given. Park and brake released. And like that, we are now clear to push. As with any airliner, do not start the engines as long as you're within the box of the gate. And with the 727, there is a little special there that you have to take into consideration. And we will talk about that now. So basically, during the pushback, you can only start engine number three. You cannot start engine 1 and 2. The reason lies down in the hydraulic system. You can see that the engine number 1 and engine number 2 are connected to hydraulic system A. If pressure is applied to system A, even with the pump switches off, there might still be some residual connection there and a small surge might go through the hydraulic system. If pressure is applied to hydraulic system A, then the nose wheel steering, which is also connected to system A, may activate for a short moment and that could potentially break the tuck or the tow bar and injure any staff that you have on the ground. For this reason only start engine number three during the pushback and not engines number one and two. So 
As soon as we're ready to start, we can reach for the start panel up here, number three. We can place the start selector into the ground position, and now the engine start is going to commence. We observe that N2 starts to rotate. We observe that the oil pressure starts to increase, and we observe that N1 is also rotating. Once 20% N2 is reached, like we have right now, lift the fuel lever up, and now the engine is going to get fuel, and once N2 reaches 40%, the starter is going to cut out. The 727 is not equipped with a FADEC. For that reason, we got to monitor the engine start process carefully ourselves. So, N2 is above 40%. Starter is cut out. We have a look at the flight engineers panel and observe that the low pressure light on the um, IDGs is not illuminated and that the generator drive oil temperature starts to rise. So with that we have a good start on engine number three. The pushback is also complete right now so we can go ahead and set our parking brake and with the pushback complete and the brake set we need to confirm that the tow bar has been removed from the aircraft or if we're using a lifting tuck like right now the airplane has been lowered down to the bottom and the tuck has been removed. So basically as soon as the tuck is clearing the aircraft like it is right now if if any pressure is applied to the nose wheel steering now and the wheel starts to move around, it's not going to cause any damage anymore. For this reason, we can go ahead and start engine number one. So, up to the start panel, starter into the ground position. Again, observe that N2 is rotating. Observe that the oil pressure starts to increase. And observe that N1 is rotating. At 20% N2, you can see the large, the tents over here, the small ones in here. So we have 20% now. We're going to turn on the fuel. And with that, our engine does light up. Now the general start sequence in the 727 is engine 3, 1 and 2 in that sequence. The background being number 3 can be started without any consideration in regards to the pushback. Engine number 1 and 2 have that consideration. So, number 1 is running, the starter is cut out. Then we can go ahead and start engine number 2. And here we go. So, a couple of things that we need to take into consideration during the engine start. Since there is no FADEC or electronic engine control in the background, we need to abort the start manually if any malfunction occurs. So what might malfunctions be? Let's say you turn on the fuel, but the EGT does not rise within a couple of seconds. That indicates that there is a problem with the engine start and the start needs to be aborted. Likewise, if the fuel flow becomes excessive over 1,500 pounds per hour, that also indicates a start problem. The same thing if the engine runs particularly hot and is about to exceed the limits, or if there is no rotation of either N1 or N2 after the starter is engaged. All of those are indicators that there are problems with the engine start and the start procedure should be discontinued. So the engine start is complete, the starter has disengaged and now we can go ahead with our procedures. So we're going to start this one on the flight engineers panel back here. The first thing we want to do is to establish electrical power. So what are we going to do for that? We need to decide which generator to use to synchronize the other ones. Normally that's generator number 3. So select the um, AC meter to generator number 3 and now you will see those lights here flashing. Now the lights will flash depending on how much out of sync the frequency of the generator field is. Now you can change that frequency using the knobs down here. And you can see that, for example, if I increase it now, then the speed at which those lights flash increases. What we want to achieve is we basically want those to get the greatest possible interval, so the slowest flashing. 
So as it increased, when I increased the frequency, let's go ahead and decrease that frequency. And over here we found a spot where they are not flashing. So this is what we're going to use now. So now we can close the generator circuits on all three generators. And now all three of those are synchronized to generator number three. When that is done, we can go ahead and set the essential power to that very generator as well, generator number three. And this has now synchronized our electrical system to the engine generators. With that done, we can move down to the fuel panel and turn on all of our other fuel pumps. Moving further down, we can turn on the second hydraulic pump of the, of the B system. And moving to the side, since our APU is no longer needed, we can go ahead and shut down our APU. Finally, we move to the air conditioning panel at the top, where we're going to turn off the bleed from, system num uh, from engine 2 and the APU, and we're going to turn on the packs. So it will be only engine 1 and engine 3 that are going to supply bleed air to our packs. And with that, we have basically finished this part of the procedure. Now, what I do recommend what you can do over here to work ahead a little bit is to turn the pack trip to normal already so that you don't need to do this on the before takeoff procedure. So now let's move forward to the captain's station and let's go ahead and do the um, captain's part of the procedure. So, with our engine start completed, we can now go ahead Switch on the engine anti-ice if necessary, that's if the temperature is 10 degrees centigrade or less and visible moisture is present. So today you can see our temperature is about 14 degrees, but we do have visible moisture, but since it's 14 we don't need the anti-ice. We're going to switch on the probe heat and we are going to extend the flaps into our takeoff position. Now, when you're extending the flaps, put them into the two position first and wait until the leading edge flaps have transited. Only after that is complete, you can go ahead and set the other flap positions. It seems to me, however, that this is currently not modeled correctly in... Oh, here they are. Okay, it just took very long. So now you've got the leading edge flap light in green, and once that is set, go ahead and select the flaps to your takeoff position. Next up, we are going to set our trim for our takeoff. And for that, we got to have a look into the takeoff page over here, since that's currently our only source for takeoff trim calculation, since the load sheet we have on the pre-flight page doesn't give us our current center of gravity. That's an unfortunate workaround. Hopefully that's going to be improved in the future. So 4.75 is going to be our takeoff trim setting. So go ahead and set this until the buck is at 4.75 which it is right here and now. Last but not least, we're going to do the flight control check. And on the flight control check, make sure that you make slow and deliberate inputs, one axis at a time. You have a flight control indicator for the elevators and the rudders over here, where you can follow the movements. So, go all the way up, all the way down, neutral, left, right neutral and when you test the rudder pedals make sure to hold the tiller in the center position so full left full right and neutral so last but not least all of that stuff out of the way before we start the taxi we've got to move back to the flight engineers panel and move the pressurization mode selector to flight if you forget this your aircraft will not pressurize after takeoff. Some airlines do this as part of the before takeoff procedure. I recommend to do it at this time. All right, at this point we could read the after start checklist and this one actually matches our airplane. So start levers, idle detent, beacon light on, engine anti ice off. And for the flight engineer, electrical power check, boost pumps on, B pumps on, hydraulic pressure check, lights out, after start checklist complete. So, 
one thing that I'm not 100% sure about, have to admit that, is the radar system A light that you see illuminated over here. One temporary fix I know for this is to go up here to the radar standby controls, move on the standby, and then back on, and that extinguishes the light. I'm not 100% sure if that is a bug in the system, as my manuals do not include any information about that, but just to have it mentioned, this is a possible workaround for that light at this point in the procedure. Next up is going to be Taxi, and that is going to be on a dedicated tutorial. So with that, thank you very much for watching, I hope you found this one interesting. As always, be sure to like, comment and subscribe, and I'm looking forward to your feedback. Thank you very much, and if you really love what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching, and see you all again on the next one.